What is in this presentation, you guys are going to be uncomfortable. That's okay. Because that is where we're going to learn as individuals and we're going to grow as a community in this school. Just a reminder that everything I say in this presentation is not me. It's from the people sitting right next to you. These are from your peers. These experiences are from your friends. Just keep that in mind when we're going through this presentation. So, I'm a senior, I'm Andrea. I moved to Fond du Lac in 2011. When I first came here, I lived in a homeless shelter for two months. Me and my family came here with only our backpacks on. During that time, I met some of the most amazing, genuine people who have helped me and my family to where we are today. In 2017, I earned the Clarence Austin Award. It's an award given by Ebony Visions in the community to young students who are bringing awareness of diversity in the community, who are mentoring the youth, especially black young girls and boys. I am an advocate in my community. I've been in the community since about seventh grade. My goal is to spread awareness and to make sure everybody knows what's going on in this community. I am diplomatic, which means I don't like violence, I don't condone in it. I believe that if we sit crisscross applesauce and we talk about it, things can get solved, which is why I'm here today. So, why do we celebrate Black History Month? Why is it important? As you all said in the presentation, in the survey, why do we shove it down your throats? And that's because Black history is American history. We have to acknowledge everything that has been done in the past so we can move forward. It is important because till this day in this school, people of color are still being discriminated against. And that should not happen. We are here today to make sure that we move forward as to watch this town and this school grow. Now in this presentation, I'm going to be saying people of color a lot which means that's everybody who ain't white. And people. Just because these experiences that I'm going to share with you don't happen to you, that don't mean it doesn't happen to everybody else. Keep an open mind during this presentation. So I'm not here to talk about the past with y'all today. Hopefully y'all heard me over the announcements every morning. We can acknowledge the past, we can be grateful for the past, but right now we have to talk about what we're doing right now so we can move on. We have to change things now for our little sisters, our little brothers, because I'm pretty sure all of y'all got them in the elementary school or in the middle school. Me, your community, don't want them to experience what we have experienced. The hardships, the struggles, we want them to be able to have an education where they feel like they belong, where they feel safe. So I'm done talking about the past. We're talking about now, in this school, and in this community. With the past, we would not be able to have the young positive leaders that we have in this school today. So myself and the administration want to say thank you to the black young leaders on this board. Not only are you affecting black people, but you're affecting your whole community. Officer Kiwan Brown, Ms. Johnson, Daisy Frazier, Shavanna Talbert, Maurice Crane Sr., Antonio Godfrey, Gary Moise, Gianna Trotter, Andrew Stone, Amani Napier, Tyler Rose, Chloe Wisdom Peterson, John Williams, Danica Shells, and myself. These people on the board are here for a reason. If you need help, they're here to guide you, especially black people in this community.
People of color are magical and mystical and powerful and beautiful and spiritual and strong and excellent at what they do. There's just so much power and talent. I can see where if people were insecure, I guess you'd be scared by it. But it's so much easier to just right. celebrate it and just thank the universe for giving us people of color because it's a gift. Ellen Pompeo getting candid about race on Jada Pinkett Smith's Facebook Watch series, Red Table Talk. If we don't talk about it, we're not going to get to the other side. We're just going to, you know, things are just going to stay in the cracks and fester. So the more that we can bring these difficult subjects to light and talk about it, the more we can purify these subjects and bring them into something new. And so um, that's why it's important for me. Don't feel like you have to tiptoe. I'm not afraid to talk about race. A lot of people get very nervous when you bring it up, yeah. and I understand why they do, but I am not afraid. That's and if you're afraid to talk about it, then that's a problem right there. Yeah. And you need to talk about it more right. than yeah. if you're afraid. Ellen is married to a black man, musician Chris Ivory, and together they have three biracial children, son Eli and daughter Sienna and Stella. That's the perfect number. Three is the perfect number. Yes, it's a lot, and it's great. I love them all. Too. My yeah. son looks completely white. You couldn't even uh, tell that wow. he has any brown in him at all. Yeah. There is no escaping when your skin is dark. And right. me sticking up or celebrating brown people does not mean it's I am anti-white. If I yeah. celebrate anything black, I inevitably get a million comments. Why are the comments, or can you tell whether the comments are coming from white people, or are they coming from... Oh, you're coming from white people. Of course yeah, they are. Yeah. Of course they are. They are threatened by my love of people of color or black culture. Yeah. Helen says she does all she can to... Two things I picked up from that video. First, if we don't talk about the things that goes on, we are never going to be able to move on. We have to speak up about what's going on, what's happening. Because at the end of the day, things that are covered up don't get healed. And you know, I hear y'all in the hallways complaining about this and that and all that stuff. You don't speak up. You want this school to change and this community to change, but what are you doing to change it? You have to speak up. Second thing I took away from this video is pro-black does not mean anti-white. I am proud of who I am. I'm proud of my skin color. I'm proud of where I came from, my ancestors, and where I'm going. That don't mean or give me the right to be disrespectful to another culture. Goals for everybody. If you white and you happy with who you are, that's good. That's great. That don't give you the right to hurt somebody else because of their cultural background. Because at the end of the day, they can't help that. Don't be afraid to speak up about what's happening. Things need to change. We are the only ones who can change it if we speak up. Be verbal. Be forceful with your words. Because I guarantee you, somebody's going to listen. Somebody's going to support you. Most of my supporters in here today are white. Let's be honest. They're white. That's okay. They never asked me to change myself or my outlooks on who I am. They knew who I was, and they supported me. Not as a black person, but as Andrea, as an individual. Just because you are proud of who you are, that don't give you the right to be rude. Now, we're going to do an activity. Just a couple warnings and whatever. This activity is based on you and what you have personally been through in this school. Don't look at the next person, whoever's standing up, and laugh. Because at the end of the day, it's not funny. And that's the reason why people don't want to speak up. It's because that fear. 
that judgmental fear that somebody's going to judge them by what they've been through. Please, respect everybody who is standing or sitting down, regardless. So I need everybody to close your eyes, including teachers. Everybody close your eyes. No peeking, no nooksies, no nothing. I need you guys to stand up, say sitting, if one of these apply to you. If you think racism exists at Fond du Lac High School, stand up. That goes for teachers as well. Y'all eyes should be closed. I see a couple peekers. Stay standing, sit down, or join your others if you think racism exists in the community, outside of this school. Stay standing, sit down, or join your peers if you have personally experienced racism against you. If you have been discriminated against because of your color. Now for a second, I need everybody to open your eyes and look around. Majority of the people who are standing up are people of color. I want to tell y'all something. When you personally get discriminated against, it hurts. It burns. It's not like the burn and scrape that you get from you scraping your knee, but it's right here. It's in your heart. It's a burning sensation. And you get left with asking, why would that person do that to me? I have gave them no reason for them to discriminate against me. Be open-minded about how others feel. Stay standing or stand up if you want to see positive changes amongst all of us. Everybody look at the room. It's not only up to me to try to make efforts to make this school change. It's all up within y'all. Look at all of us standing up. We can do a hell of a lot. It's not up to me. It's up to you. For you to want to see changes, you have to do something. Not just me up here on this stage. Y'all want to see all of this happen. Take action. Do what you have to do to make sure things are changing around here. You guys can sit down. So early in January, I sent out a survey. And only 32 of the student body responded. One thing, and this is a fact. This is the highest that a student body has responded to a survey. First of all, let me say this. As I said before, things don't get healed if they are covered up. You have to express what you want to see change. Because administrators, all of them, they can't speak for everybody else. Speak your voice, speak your truth, and then things will actually start changing around here. For the people who are responding, I just want to say personally thank you. Because without the 32% of people responding, I would not have been able to be up on this stage. And I am forever grateful. The reason why I did this survey is not for my satisfactory. But everybody needs to know how people of color are feeling. What they go through on a daily basis. This could be one of your friends. This could be your peer. This could be your teammate. Please be open-minded. So one of the questions was, do you believe that there is racism at the high school? 72% said yes, 19% said no. It's sad to see that 19%. I can't stress enough that in this school, we are a neighborhood, but we cannot live on two different sides of the town. 
If you see something go on, don't turn the blind eye. Because at the end of the day, people are going through this every single day. If you don't speak up, it would be affected to them. We cannot live on two sides of the town. We cannot do it. We are a neighborhood. We are supposed to be one. We are a student body. Think of it as a real body. And for one body to work, all of its nerves has to be connected and have communication. That's what we need in this student body. Communication. We need to know how other people are feeling. We need to be aware of what's going on so we can make the student body work. I asked, do you believe that there is racism outside of the school? 83% said yes, 8% said no. Even though it's not happening to you personally, that does not mean it's not happening to somebody else. I understand that you feel like, oh, it's not my problem. I'm not gonna be worried about them. That's understandable. But speak up. Don't turn that blind eye. Report it. Say something. So when I go through these student voices, I want you guys to keep in mind that these are from your peers. Everything that's being said could be from the person right next to you, not just me. The things that I'm going to say, it's really happening in somebody's life at this school. And if this doesn't open your eyes, I feel bad for you. Because at the end of the day, school is here to prepare you for the real world. Not just fun and giggles at this school. I asked, have you witnessed racism in the school? Yes, there are so many Caucasian kids who have said the N-word to African Americans in a racist way. There is someone who I know personally who makes immigration jokes and means them. There is a teacher that has told an African American student to go and pick cotton. Two things. It ain't no joke. If you are the only one laughing when you say a joke like that, that means something wrong with you. Period. It's not funny. And I don't know where individuals get the thought that it's funny, but it's really not. A couple months back, an 11-year-old boy killed himself because of a joke his friend made. It's not funny when it costs somebody's life, is it? Let's, it, it shouldn't be funny, period. Now, in this school, teachers do discriminate people of color. There is something being done in the works with communicating with Siebert and Steinbarth. But at the end of the day, and this is a message to teachers, What? <laughs> Teachers, we look up to you. You are supposed to be our mentors, our educators, someone who's supposed to get us prepared. I'm pretty sure it's in your handbook, don't discriminate. Let's quit that. This is not just a job that pays. This is somebody's life. This is a student life. We look up to you. Yes, there is more administration, administrators in the halls by black group of friends than white groups. The police officers target black and brown students. We hang out in the English pod. We hang out in public class. We, yeah, we do that. I want to put some insight on you guys. The reason why the English pod has its name or reputation, as you would say, we are in a class, people of color, people of color, including myself, we're in a class for 45 minutes where we cannot be ourselves. We can't laugh. We get talked about. We can't talk. They joke about how we don't have proper grammar. We 
can't talk about what we did or how we do it because people look at us as a joke. And for you to be in that setting for 45 minutes, it just makes you uncomfortable. Some people go to the English Potter Quellas class because it's where you feel comfortable. You can finally let go and be yourselves. That's the truth. Be open-minded. Make a friend. Make an Asian friend. Make a black friend. Just make a friend. No, if you think there's racism, you need to take a hard good look at yourself and see what you think racist really isn't. Racism is when you discriminate or do a prejudice act against an individual based on their skin color. Because, honey, I took a look, good look at myself. That's what that is, period. I asked in a situation, do you try to be a by, uh, stand up to racism or report it, or are you a bystander? I'll stand up and or report it if it were serious or caused discomfort to someone. I know that sometimes kids just mess around with it, which I still think is disrespectful, but I'm too scared to interrupt them because they're always lecturing me on how they were just joking. My advice is to still report it. It's not a joke. Because when you get out in the real world and outside of Fond du Lac, you may put yourselves in harm's way. It's just a fact. I see it on the news every day. If you see somebody choking around, lecture them. Check them. It's okay. I may do it in a respectful way, but at the end of the day, check them. Check their privilege. Yeah, like I said before, I hear a friend say something, I usually will tell them why they shouldn't say stuff like that. I never see it as them saying it to someone else. Again, if your friend and y'all are groups that y'all talk to say something like that, check them. Because in the real world, somebody may not be nice. It's not okay to say it to your friend, to a person, nobody. Don't just think you can say it inside your group, but you can't say on the outside or inside. Don't say it at all. Period. It, it ain't no point. It's quite tough. It depends personally. I'm not just a bystander reporter or a person who stands up for racism. I'm a combination. If I observe that the persons or victims to racism has everything under control, and in this case, I may be a bystander. However, if the individual seems helpless, I will definitely stand up for them. I've done this before with bullies as well. Bullies don't always quit their bullying. Even when I do say something, this is when I report it. It's a process. It is a process. But even if you don't know the inside of a situation, still report it. Still be verbal. Because one thing can seem like something when nothing is being done. Would you like to see your, how would you like to see your community deal with racism? I would like to see only black people in a presentation about Black History Month like all the black people back then that made a difference. <laughs> no bragging points, but I am the first to ever do this. There can be more. Y'all just don't know how much you can change. People just need to know that your skin color doesn't make you a good or bad person. I like to see actual action be taken and not teachers just say, just ignore it because it's really hard to do when it's a constant event. As I said before, people are being discriminated against every single day. And teachers, don't tell them just to ignore it. Be that person. Be there for that student. Go report it to your boss. Students, your skin color does not make you a good or bad person. You do. 
Just because I'm black up here don't mean I gang bang or do all that stuff, no. You are a good or bad person depends on you, not your skin color. I would like to see people stand up to racism peacefully. I wouldn't want violence. I would want to show them that other cultures are like aliens. We are people and human. You have to be able to communicate. If you have an anger spot, take a seat. Calm down, because I guarantee you, if you show people anger, nothing will get done. Be verbal with your words. Stand your truth. Things will get done, I guarantee you. Do you believe the high school celebrates different cultures and ethnic groups? Celebrate as in festivals, we don't celebrate anyone, be it Caucasian, Asian, African American, or likewise. Hopefully in a few short years that can change. Hopefully within a couple months it can change. We are trying to do things based on how the student feels. We can't do things if people are not verbal about how they feel. Yes, if and only if you go to a global teens event that is hosted at the school. Otherwise, no, definitely not. That information will be headed you guys away pretty shortly. It is an event that global teens do after school where we celebrate different ethnic groups. We do traditional dances, we eat other cultures food, it's an amazing event. No, it wouldn't be celebrated. It's only celebrated because Andrea decides to speak about it. I'm gonna tell y'all something. My family has always taught me that a closed mouth don't get fed. I was taught to express how I feel by communication. But it's not up to me. It's up to you guys. Don't do something or make yourselves forced to be changed because I'm up here. If you want to genuinely see it, you have to take action. Not just because I'm up here. Because I'm going to leave. We all going to leave. It. I can't take charge anymore. It's up to you guys. Don't do something because you see the next person doing it. Do it because you actually want to see it happen. It starts with us. I know we graduate in a few short months or whatever, but in those short months, we can do so much. You guys, just, it's unbelievable how much we can do. We have to be able to be the change you guys have little sisters and brothers in elementary school or in the middle school. They're going to be coming here in a few short years. Let's create a pathway where they can walk the walk. They can be able to talk to, hang out, don't worry about having to be judged or any of that. Let's start doing that. It's really up to us. We have, people look up to us. We have to be able to be the change. Because at the end of the day, love trumps hate. Hatred will bring this town so down into dust, it's ridiculous. But that's a waste of time. Hating somebody, judging somebody, uh, criticizing them about their wearing, it's a waste of time. It really is. Because at the end of the day, you're not affecting nobody but your own selves. Love one another. Be there for one another. Support one another. Lean on one another. It's okay. It's not like you're going to lose something. It's okay. We are here for a reason. People made people for a reason. My hopes... I hope you guys leave here with a deeper understanding that we are a neighborhood. We have to be able to lean on each other. We have to be able to support one another. Because we're going to run this town dry if we don't. If you need some sugar, I'm going to give you some sugar. If you need help with something, I'm going to help you. Because at the end of the day, we both trying to get to the finish line. Help each other out. We are a neighborhood. We have to stay connected. 
it's really okay. I don't know what the theory is. I don't know if somebody worried about losing something, but it's okay. Teachers, be there for your students. Be their second parent. Love them. Guide them. Teach them. We are a neighborhood within a community. We can't try to control this community or this nation when we can't even fix our own selves. I hope you guys know that everybody deserves respect. Not just black people, not just white people, everybody. Because at the end of the day, this town is getting more and more diverse. If y'all don't like it, y'all can move. I don't, I don't know what to do. But we have to work things out. We have to respect one another. We have to. So, I'm not just up here to make it a better place for myself and my family and my little chocolate drop. We have to make it better. I'm here trying to make it better for everybody. I hope you are doing the same exact thing. Because I would be scared if my little siblings or in a couple years, if I have a child and my chocolate drop going here, I would be scared. Because we have to get ourselves in order first before we can do anything else. So when you leave here, don't just think about this today. Carry it on. Carry it on until you get to college. So you be married, so you have a grandchild. Not just today and not for this hour, but forever. Can't just go Cardi B see it? <laughs> forever. Okay, I'm sorry. But I really hope y'all took something away from this today. Like I said, I'm not just up here for me, but I'm up here for everybody. Hopefully y'all can do the same. In these three months or four months, we can do so much. So I hope you guys have a great day.